All right, going to show you that conditional security is a Catholic doctrine of devils. Going to go to the uh, Catholic Council of Trent, which what it says about the eternal security belief and how it teaches the doctrine of devils, known as conditional security. This is session six, canon number 23 of the Catholic Church Council of Trent. If anyone saith that once that a man once justified can sin no more, nor lose grace, and that therefore he that falls and sins is, was never truly justified, or, on the other hand, that he is able during his whole life to avoid all sins, even those that are venial, except by a special privilege from God, as the church holds in regard of the Blessed Virgin, let him be anathema. Now, there is elements of truth to what's being said here. Okay? They're saying that you can't be sinlessly perfect, which is true. Scripture does teach against the Luciferian doctrine of devils, known as sinless perfectionism, in Psalms 130, verses 3 to 4, Proverbs 20, verse 8 to 9, Psalms 143, verse 1 to 2, Psalms 39, verse 5, Job 40, verses 1 to 4, Isaiah 6, verse 5 to 7, Isaiah 64, verse 6, Ecclesiastes 7, 20, 1 Kings 8, 46, 2 Chronicles 6, 36, Job 15, verses 14 to 16, Job 25, verse 4 to 6, 1 John 1, 8 to 10, Ecclesiastes 6, 9 through 11, and many, many other scriptures that teach against this Luciferian heresy, this doctrine of devils known as sinless perfectionism. So there is elements of truth. You can't be sinlessly perfect. However, they also say that you basically, if you're saying you can't lose grace, then let it be anathema. Well, the Bible teaches that once you're justified by God, you can't lose your salvation. Okay? Uh, which is something the Catholic Church denies when they teach their doctrine of devils, known as conditional security. John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that, the Father, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that, all, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but you raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So when you get saved, you will not be cast out, and Jesus Christ will not lose you, when he gives you eternal life, not when you save yourself by your self-righteousness. John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth, is, he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Should not perish. It's that simple. When Jesus Christ, when he provides you eternal life. John chapter 10, verses 20, 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So when Jesus Christ gives you eternal life, you will never perish. It's, he, it's him that gives you eternal life. Again, not you by your own self-righteousness. When you come to the, you know, if Jesus, were, if Jesus were to say to you, why should I let you into heaven? Your answer should not be because I, you know, it should be because Jesus Christ paid for my sins. Not because I did this or I did that. But you see, if you're a conditional security papist, you can say, well, I live holy, I did this, I did that. You can boast in your self-righteousness, just like the Pharisee in Luke chapter 10, sorry, Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. You won't come into condemnation, you will not perish. You are saved when Jesus Christ gives you eternal life. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation and ready to be revealed in the last time. So you have a place, you're seated in the heavenly places right now, and it will not fade away and it, it's reserved for you, and you're kept by the power of God. This is a verse that these conditional security devils don't like. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, trusting in Christ, not trusting in yourself, by the way, trusting in Christ, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Remember, you have a place in heaven reserved for you, and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you trust in Christ, not trusting in your self-righteousness like any Pharisee or Papist will. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. What's the day of redemption? The redemption of your bodies, the rapture. You're sealed. Okay, what does it mean to be sealed? It's closed up. It's sealed up. It's that simple. You're, you're secure. And conditional, conditional security Papist devils don't like that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. You're sealed. Those three scriptures talk about you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. So that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Makes a problem for both the conditional security devils, the papists, and also the post-trippers, because we're waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, not the coming of the Antichrist. And he will confirm you unto the end. You don't confirm yourself, Jesus Christ confirms you. Compare this over to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. You're preserved unto his heavenly kingdom. It's that simple. Conditional security is a Roman Catholic doctrine of devils. It's a false doctrine. It's a false gospel of works, and let it be accursed. And conditional security uh, proponents are preaching a false papist gospel, and let it be accursed. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism, and don't be deceived by their damnable heresies like conditional security. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.